The first technique in Kempo Karate for Christ is delayed sword. Delayed sword is a technique for a grab. It's a right direct lapel grab. So they're reaching forward, the attacker's reaching forward with his right hand, he's grabbing hold of your jacket, hold of your lapel this way, and getting ready to hit you with the other hand, something like this. So um, our initial defense on this one is um, for most of yellow belt, we're retreating. You want to step back, get your fighting stance established, create some distance there before they have an opportunity to throw that punch. And we want to cover the hand that's already latched on, that's already attacked us. So the first step to delayed sword is just um, immobilizing that hand and taking a fighting stance. So you reach up with your left hand, straight up pin that hand that's grabbing onto you here, the, pin that right hand, and as you step back, and it's important to step back with the left hand, coming straight back into a neutral bow position, that togial line, fighting stance. And most of the first techniques here in yellow belt are going to use this kind of retreating into a fighting stance uh, posture. So, step one, they grab, you grab a hold of them, we step back, we raise up our defense, shields up, and raise that front hand, that way it covers all this area. If they do throw that punch, you've got this hand to use defensively. Now another point to keep in mind is in order for them to hit you with the other hand, if they're grabbing you with their right hand and they're getting ready to hit you with the left, the shoulder, their left shoulder, has to pivot to the front in order for them to reach. Right? In order to have any, generate any power in that punch, the shoulder's got to move in order for the fist to be able to move. Well, if when you pin their hand and you step back, you jerk them, uh, jerk the right shoulder forward, it automatically pulls the left shoulder back. They may still be able to throw that punch, but it's not going to have the same force, the same sting that it would if they're able to pivot into that. So your first initial, by pinning their hand and stepping back to establish your fighting stance, you're pulling them off balance. And so the more you can drag them towards you, the better. Um, because that will both um, kind of diffuse the power that they're going to have in that, that left hand if they do try to throw it for that punch as well as they lose their foundation, their stance is broken, their posture is broken, if you can pull them forward. And you're prepared, you're in a fighting stance, and they're off balance, right? That, all that happens with just with step one. Pin the hand, step back, neutral bow fighting stance here for delayed sword. Now from here, step two, I'm going to continue to, still pulling them with me, pull back into cat stance here quickly, and while uh, they're kind of in a tunnel vision, which is what usually happens, to start thinking, you know, up here. And we, we, we miss the feet. We, we, you don't see below the waist. So as we draw back, this kind of sneaks in with a right snapping front kick to the stomach. And that becomes step two. As it comes back here and you're defensive, you pull them off balance, this hand's covering that high line. The front snap kick to the abdomen um, will cause them to bend forward. Now, so now their posture is really broken, and they're what we call table-topped. They're forward, and they have brought the last target towards you. And the last target in this case is underneath the ear and behind the jaw, there's a little hole there. We call that the mastoid, mastoid process. And if you push into that, it's kind of uncomfortable here. Um, that nerve center there behind the jaw and underneath the ear uh, on your hand, at the very bottom there, um, when we use this sword hand, we're not actually hitting with the whole flat here, but it's, it's closer towards the wrist, the meaty bottom part of the hand. However, this small bony part right at the very bottom of the wrist fits into that little pocket really, really well. And if you can have enough discernment as you do the laid sword to be able to fit that small part of your hand, right into that little pocket, it will be lights out, right? You're going to generate all your power for that final strike by executing it as your weight shifts forward while you're dropping, uh, planning down from that right front kick, right? So Delayed Sword has three steps, but it's really only two counts here. So count one comes back in preparation, and then two and three kind of fit together as one count, kick and hand sword as you plank down. Really generating your, your, your weight forward will generate more power into that strike. You want your entire weight kind of all down into your hand, going into their head, and that can be lights out there. All of that together is delayed sword. Again, pin, we step back, neutral bow posture, defensive, 
front kick low to the abdomen, outward hand sword, behind the ear to the mastoid with the right hand. And that's delayed sword. Chop, hand sword, uh, there you go. 